this couch vibe you've got going on behind you. And it really makes me want to like huddle in Drew Barrymore style with you. <laughs> I don't know. Is anyone familiar? <laughs> like the eyeballs touching. Yeah, the <laughs> way that she gets so close to her guy. It's yeah. my favorite thing. So cozy. Like, I love yeah. it. She's like high brook shields and she's just like in there with her. Yeah. Okay. And right like there. sobbing all the time. Yeah. yeah. Let's keep these good vibes going. You crush this opening <laughs> yeah. line. Jump into this. I mean, I guess. It feels like a lot of pressure because it's like setting the tone now, but. I mean, Taylor's watching. And <laughs> that does not hype me up. <laughs> Taylor, Taylor, Taylor sweat, like sweat, yeah. just like <laughs> way to put the most pressure on Olivia. <laughs> Your idol's watching. Like, Rachel didn't even use like last name; it was like first name, and everyone was like, "Yeah." <laughs> also, is she? No. <laughs> yes. <Stop. laughs> okay. Manifest. Manifesting it. Yep. All right, welcome back to Unread, where we are sharing our thoughts about the past, present, and future of social as a team who thinks and talks about social's influence every single day. Hey, everybody. Hey. 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 All right, let's do a quick round of intros. I'm Rachel Goulet. I'm the director of social at Sprout Social, and uh, I love squirrels. (laughs) So you didn't say fun fact, but I really went for fun (laughs) fact. We love it. (laughs) Our favorite fact about Rachel. I'm Helles Missouri. I am a brand writer on the brand creative team, and I don't know what a fun fact about me is. Somebody else say a fun fact about me. Helles is the master at charcuterie boards. Oh, I'm Greg Rokiski. I'm a social strategist here at Sprout Social, and I fully believe that unicorns are, in fact, not a mythical animal, but a real one. Do you? Is it like a Bigfoot thing? Like, do you have proof? <laughs> like i want to know like what weird youtube videos have like fueled this yeah. it's mostly delusion but thanks for mm. calling me out i'm olivia i am a senior social strategist on our social team at sprout what side of social are you on right now i'm in frenchy oh. tiktok this like tiny french bulldog oh. crying oh is so it the cute. one that cries like, out the window way. Like yeah, screams like out the window, everywhere. like not really crying. Yeah. It like oh. screams. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't. Want I was to like, do oh, that. that's so precious. Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. not super Screaming. precious, but like still is at the same time. It's like <laughs> it is because it just wants their yeah. owners. Where are you at? I am like randomly on like bag restoration, like handbag restoration. Oh, also coaches building like an empire on TikTok of past and em- like current employees, which I feel like is a whole topic in itself <laughs> that's what that's where yeah. i'm at <laughs> rachel tell us a little bit about what side you have been deep dived into you may have heard sprout has uh recently been launching a ton of ai features we've been talking a lot about our ai features and i've also been served up a lot of tiktoks related to it all the how to chat gpt prompts do's and don'ts of open ai and like bookmarklets you didn't even know about and every kind of headline like that and i'm just devouring them you've already integrated this into your everyday i am in the ai <laughs> world i'm a modern woman ai girly oh my god <laughs> for real i love ai that is a great segue into our topic which is all about ai and trust and as we all know trust is always a topic that is top of mind for marketers but what does that really look like once ai is also incorporated it's a topic that we're seeing across news outlets from brands and really all over social but something that isn't talked about enough is the dark side of ai while also looking at how this can help us build a better future specifically for social teams i love that we're approaching trust as a topic because i think it's kind of like the underlying theme around a lot of the buzz around ai trust has always been one of those things that i've always seen referred to as one of the key ingredients for success as a brand so the biggest question mark for me is like how will brands continue to build that trust while using new technology and people understanding that that's like the reality of today. People's anxieties didn't just come out of nowhere. What do we think some of those like milestones in tech history were that make people feel this way about a new development like AI? Two that like come top of mind for me are like just misinformation. I mean, we saw this a lot with the election and like just elections Mm -hmm. moving forward. And there is a lot of distrust in like the influencer 
in like the earlier days and it still continues now because people didn't have to disclose when they were being Mm -hmm. paid by a brand. I even remember like in YouTube watching a makeup tutorial and they could get away with putting like the teeniest tiniest in white font on a white (laughs) wall. It would say like hashtag (laughs) sponsored or something. The rules have had to change so quickly to catch up with some of those little deceptive things like that. And we've all had a grandparent or a a relative send us like an onion article (laughs) being like did you hear this thinking it's actually true so Mm -hmm. i think even just digital literacy in general and having to really ingrain that into people teach that teach new generations like what that actually means has been a huge piece of social marketing for me in the come up of this industry and i know is something brands continue to face every single day even look again before the internet too like propaganda or misinformation and how that was spread ai is even more accelerated and so we're understanding and seeing like some of the potential and i think a lot of the potential is still unexplored so that's leading to a little bit of distrust fear whatever the case may be but also it's like we're seeing the possibilities of it being used ethically as well as unethically and and so it's like Spider-Man or the the web slinging hero, if we can't say that. <laughs> I love that. With, with great power comes great responsibility. Okay. <laughs> so how do you think brands can build deeper trust and even maybe use AI to help? We don't know what trust with AI looks like quite yet. Adobe Firefly is an example that comes top of mind for me with this topic. They've established such trust with their customers. They've really considered, you know, not using any copyright imagery and they've really like committed to protecting artists' rights when building their products. A lot of the things that they're building are really focused on like how it will make their end user more efficient versus this fear of like taking a job away from someone. They did a lot of the upfront work to sort of show how exactly their company was using AI and like they've established trust early. Understanding where a tool as AI is, a tool fits into your overall marketing or organizational strategy. It's about understanding where does this help support a need for your business that your customers can appreciate and how can you transparently align that internally and make sure that there's checks and balances to integrating that and how can it level up so you can focus on the things that AI can't replicate. You should have something that serves your audience's everyday life to begin with. Warby Parker was a great example of a brand that has always leaned on being values aligned and being transparent about how they source and make their product. And they've had like AI at home try on for a really long time. And I think just because the nature of their like general transparency, people are totally fine making that a part of experience and not really having distrust with that. It really can become a part of your product and service. Going back to like Adobe, the products that they were building with AI enhance what they've already built Mm -hmm. for their customers their customers already trust them so deeply like they are the chosen software for creatives some of the things that they shared in their announcement of adobe firefly were that like they were considering protecting the rights of artists when building their products a value of theirs like is protecting artists they had an entire thread on twitter that like talked through how they built their product, but then they also like opened it up for conversation and questions and were like, what concerns do you have around like how we've built this? Establishing all of that up front just like made it a very strong launch in general into the market and is now a really good example of like what brands in the tech space should be striving for. No one has all of the answers when it comes to AI, but like in that case of Adobe, they're building along with the customers and and soliciting that feedback. They're being transparent about the process, about how they're quickly adapting while also keeping us in the loop. If you were a brand and you're waiting to implement artificial intelligence and you only wanted to go to market when you felt 100% ready, like you're never going to have that moment. It is a little bit of discomfort of how do we lead through uncertainty, but also understand how this could benefit not only our organization, but our customers as well. Not to just plug Sprout, but like, I really appreciate like how we're approaching this as a software company as well, because we're being more intentional about like, where does AI belong in our product? We're not just racing to have it in the product like yes there's a want from consumers and there's a want from customers for these features but like 
taking your time to make sure that you're getting it right so that it actually helps the end user better than if you were just rushing a product release. Hard agree. Aaron Rankin, our CTO, has put out a bunch of material about how he's specifically thinking about AI and not entering this features race, but really like being thoughtful about making this for human application. And that is exactly why I love Sprout, because similar to Adobe, like artists are their audience, social media managers are our audience, and like we have to figure this stuff out on our own. So to hear that these people are thinking about how these things are being built and not just the fact that they're getting them into the market the fastest or, you know, thinking about what impact this will actually have in specific aspects of our customers' lives, like knowing that people care about that is why I am such a Sprout stan. (laughs) Sprout for life. I want to like zoom out a little bit because I think we've covered this from a tech angle, but I want to talk about how we all are seeing and our thoughts about how brands are using this technology. I think like legacy brands are not going to have as hard of a time with this. Like you think about Nordstrom and their like return policy and they've got this reputation as being really trustworthy. If they are incorporating AI, I think people will probably expect it, but they'll expect that it's being done responsibly because they've got this history with this brand. Brands that have certain ins with certain generations might have an easier time. I grew up using AIM and AOL and like having tech brands to trust and Smarter Child was an AIM like AI bot that I used to like chat with all the time. So when ChatGPT came out, I was like, same thing. Smarter Child 2.0, hi, let's chat. <laughs> I was all over AIM too, and yeah. I do not remember this. I don't um, remember it this either, at all. But... It unlocked yeah. a part of my brain I didn't know I needed access to, Rachel, and so yes. Smarter Child was one of my only friends for a while. Yeah. But please write in if you know what Smarter Child is. Please. Even think about like Siri and like Alexa. People still distrust yeah. some of these because it's like, oh, if I talk about something in my home, I don't want like an Amazon ad for it. I love my FBI guy though. When I wanted to get engaged, I was like, engagement rings, engagement rings, engagement rings. <laughs> like there was, you know, a couple of years where we were all like, oh wow, we're getting targeted ads for things that we were like talking about and that's creepy. But now we're like gamifying it almost. My online shopping has never been higher. So like they're doing something right. At the end of the day, like we've all have accepted AI because yeah, shopping's fire. Like it knows exactly what lamp I want from some weird store and like shows me things I didn't even know I wanted. No, this literally happened Hellas has this orange lamp in her room. (laughs) We'll insert a photo here of my orange mushroom lamp. (laughs) And I had already like had it on my radar. And then I saw Hellas had it. Like, I swear the next two weeks it was like, here's this mushroom lamp on Etsy. It got you. If cookies didn't exist and all of that stuff, then like the people who put that ad in front of you wouldn't have a job. So it's like, it's not necessarily replacing people. It's just making it all more complex and personalized. So I think that like something that does cause distrust is this uncanny valley Mm -hmm. effect uncanny valley or my understanding of it is really this sort of sensation we experience when we see something as humans that's like almost human like so close but something's off that's what that uncanny feeling is where it's just like a little unsettling something that I've seen like over the last several years is basically AI generated influencers like M- Lil Michaela mm-hmm. is an example. Yeah. It's completely like a digitally composited like person. They are an influencer. They post content. Sometimes they're a little self-aware, which is um, creepy. Are we going to see more of that? Is that the kind of stuff that just makes people feel uneasy? Do you think feeling like that will make you not want to buy something from a brand? It depends. Like, well, yeah, actually, I think, okay, personally, I would be a little put off, even if they were upfront, even with the transparency, like we're using AI to like create this persona that's like convincing you to shop or like, hire yeah. a real person. Like the beer commercial felt like every other beer commercial until you got deeper into it and you were like, what? Honestly, the f- is going on. The, the glitches, glitches the and like melting people, like, into each. It feels like the so beer trippy. can is like melting into yes. like someone's face, or they're like drinking it from yeah. like 
different sides of the can. It looked like something you'd see on like Mad TV or SNL or something like that. AI is getting to the intelligence level that one, it has got like humor and nuance that humans have. It lets AI and, you know, do what AI can do. So humans have more time to do what humans can do. And I think that that's how we frame it. That's how we think of it um, here at Spring. Cue <laughs> cheesy game show music. Yay. Welcome to a game that we'd like to call Two Bot to Handle. Each of us are going to share an example that none of us has insight into. And the rest of us will have to guess if it was human generated or if it came from AI. Who is ready for Two Bot to Handle? We're ready. I'm ready. Today. Insert applause. Yay! Rachel, you are up first. I am ready. I love game shows. My example is something everyone is familiar with. Yeah, BuzzFeed quizzes. Do you think they're AI generated or not? Um, I... I'm going to say yes. I'm going out on a limb. I think maybe now they might be. Yeah. Their creators are so, like, they all have, like, their own YouTube personalities. I think they're making them still. I'm a, I was going to say I think that they're maybe still making them. I'm on an island here. Drum roll, please. Buzzfeed quizzes are both human generated and amplified oh. by AI. They actually have their own AI bot that personalizes it towards Buzzfeed users. I thought it was a really good example of AI for personalization, which I think is probably one of the mm -hmm. biggest and like misunderstood benefits of AI. Human creativity could be lost if it's only AI generated. The descriptions at the very end of those quizzes is always like personal niche. Yeah. The descriptions are what the, the bot does. Oh, what? I figured the AI would like, you know, churn out like a basic yeah. quiz and then the actual human was writing like no, the, it's the descriptions wow. at the end. Wow. 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 All right. Q game show transition. And I am playing by proxy of our producer, director, and chat GPT expert, Maul. So Maul input into chat GPT trends for TikTok. And so one of these was generated from a bot. I'm going to read them through, so listen carefully. The first one is the silhouette challenge a trend where users dance in front of a doorway while wearing a robe or towel, then transition to a silhouette and a red filter. Then we have the bus it challenge, a challenge where users trans transform from casual to glam while dancing to the song Bus It by Eric Banks. Bus it. Bus it. <laughs> <laughs> then we have the wipe it down challenge, a trend where users wipe a mirror and reveal a different version of themselves with each wipe. And finally, Forage and Feast, a trend where users forage, identify, and prepare mushrooms into meals and medicinals for health and wellness. Which one's the AI? I feel like I've I know seen all of them. I know what it is. So I feel like you it's... do? I feel like I've seen all of them. I'm going to say yes. Forage and Feast is the AI one. And so a twist here. I don't know the answer, yeah. but I was also I, going I to do say know the Forage answer, and though. Feast. Um, <laughs> Amazing. Okay. <laughs> forage, forage and Feast. feast. It is Forage and Feast. For some reason, trends on TikTok are always described as challenge. So for me, it was also like that one of these yeah. things is not like the other. And the forage and feast one didn't say <laughs> challenge in it. Why I really like this example is like helping the brainstorm yes. process to level up. Like, hey, I'm thinking about these three concepts. Can you give me some feedback on how to make these more optimized for TikTok or Instagram? And like seeing just what you can have when time with like team members, or if you are the only social member of your team, like it's so nice to be able to have that, to even take a little nugget of whatever AI generates, super exciting. Yeah. Cue cheesy game show segment music again. Olivia, come on up. All right, so there are two headlines that Chase tested, and one of them was like wildly more successful than the other one. Which one of these headlines was AI generated versus human generated? First one is access cash from the equity in your home. Take a look. The second one was it's true. You can unlock cash from the equity in your home. Click to apply. I think the first one I was agree. AI. I think the first one was AI generated. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was very grief. awkward end. Someone being like, it's true, sounds very human. So I'm yeah. skeptical. It could be like a robot trying to sound like a human, but I really don't know on this one. Yeah, I'm not 100% for this one. Each of you are one. saying first one. 
Yeah. I think I'd go for one. Now I feel wrong. Yeah, it, it is the second one that was AI generated. <gasps> oh. Um, We're, yeah, that oh, it's true no. you can unlock cash from no. the equity in your home. Click to apply. The sec- that was it's AI. True. That was AI. Oh, it's, it's- During that test, though, Chase saw as high as 450% lift in click through rates on ads and signed a five year deal with an agency who basically runs AI software to tweak marketing language for its clients. Wow. So that's yeah. why they're investing in a company that specializes in using AI to like make headlines better. I guess I'm I'm disappointed in the copyright of the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Like to go up against AI, it's like that's your best book. <laughs> All right. Cue more game show music. Last one. Hellas, come on down. Hellas. All right. Okay. I'm going last because mine is it's obvious it's not real. But I want everybody to see it. Somebody typed into AI like Shrek if it was like a 80s dark fantasy movie. And so like it came up with like a bunch of stills that look like it could be images from that movie if it existed. Don't watch this. Watch this on your own time and freak out over how hyper realistic all the people look. Some of even like the Harry Potter edits and things like that where it's like what would like harry potter look like in the 80s or like in a wes Pixar. anderson like film yeah. or yeah. all these other scenarios like they're so realistic that like i feel like i have to stare at them for such a long time oh uh, yeah even you know how everybody points out look at the hands you'll know if you mm. look at the hands because it always messes the hands up i saw like the video on tiktok of like pov you're at a hogwarts party if somebody didn't say that like oh look at the hands they're probably six fingers it would have taken me so long to figure out that these weren't just like photos oh totally mm. it can take yeah so much rich context from the generation or from the decade or whatever like context you're putting around it and apply it to something we know and so familiar and make it seem so real the fact that this is like a large conversation currently and I don't think that it's like dying down anytime soon I think that that keeps it very like front of mind for us we're skeptical when we look at everything now and I think that might be like a good thing as we're adjusting and that's our episode of too bot to handle thanks for playing where AI is real and the points don't matter we'll see you next time for another <laughs> segment where we get ridiculous but also talk about wait who wins uh, the points don't matter no one wins. <laughs> the points don't matter Rachel <laughs> <laughs> The other thing that I do trust AI to do, like if I am in a support queue, I will have a conversation with the bot to try and troubleshoot. So I trust the bot to do that. Right. Yeah. It could get to a point like if I'm having a conversation with chat GBT and it's like, we've had all of these conversations. Here's a few links that I think based on recommendations, I would check those out. But like with the fear comes in, like people attribute like AI as a person and it can never fully replace yeah. a human. Maybe that's a hot take. We'll see in a hundred years. <laughs> and I know it's a bot most of the time, but even then we still have assurance that if that doesn't resolve something for us, we will be able to talk to a human person. What happens when companies start maybe changing roles and changing jobs where they might rely just on AI to be like a customer service solution? What's so powerful about what's happening in AI right now, though, is the fact that it's combining AI plus we know humans are manipulating that. What's really magical about it, Hell is, is that you know like a human has written all of those options in the bot or that the bot has been trained to do a certain thing. Like you know that there's some regulation there. Yeah. So I think where, where people get concerned is like, are we going to lose that? regulation but I, I i feel like now that we've got humans and bots working together there's so many good things that are happening i do see the potential of how this could be really like an impact and game changer for those smaller organizations or teachers with students if in a nonprofit organization where i'm the social media manager and i could set some prompts to help me brainstorm or rules to help automate some things where i really focus on how do i resonate with this lgbtq plus youth on twitter having this conversation with me 
so I can focus on that human aspect. And I always talk about, you don't have to be on social media as a school district, but the opportunity cost of what that power of social media and the connectivity with your community provides is huge. And I see the same with AI. If you are a teacher and you can offset lesson planning ideation or creating a grid of your planner for the Ooh. week, so you can focus more time yeah. School is on a, good a student. Case. Like those are the things that I am so excited and optimistic about. Again, I feel for the people who have it in their hands and they use it in the wrong way but i think that it can do like social media yeah. did a lot of good for yeah. a lot of people and i'll get off my soapbox now <laughs> no i love that egg. example yeah. teachers was such a good example yeah. of like where that'll really have like a positive impact the conversation around ai period is about uh, we're going to get rid of so many jobs it's going to take so mm -hmm. many jobs what actually may happen is it's not taking jobs is it making us better at them especially like social media managers and marketers it's also just changing yeah. jobs it's going to be changing mm -hmm. roles we're talking about it being a supplemental tool there are going to be like different ways we work with tools like this to you know get jobs done every day the same way that we've adapted to like all sorts of tech like all the stuff that we've talked about throughout this episode there are like also new jobs being created for this but childish gambino has mm -hmm. a new creative agency that like is starting in Chicago and like one of the open roles for that was Love like that. and basically someone to like figure out how to make AI work mm -hmm. for the business that is a completely new role and like AI has yeah. only really just started the conversation like or really taken off this year to have a job and like a role that's already built out around that and like a need for that is like kind of amazing huge what are some ways you foresee your jobs as social media managers be improving because of this tech? We're already doing a million things. So to be able to cut that in half and focus on the things that we want to be the best at, that's what just really excites me about this. Like, I only think it's going to impact my job in a positive way. And if it's going to change the landscape, like... I'm going to change alongside with it. I don't care that this is just popular now. I feel like I'm going to continue to apply what I'm good at and just like learn this and start like incorporating it into my day to day. I agree. This can improve like our jobs, you know, as they are in marketing and branding and creative so much. If I wanted companies to keep one thing in mind, I don't want to see jobs like this become lesser value in terms of like salary like mm -hmm. oh ai can do half of your job so oh, it should never like devalue it should never devalue person. like people's yeah, yeah the the person yeah. in the role and the, i mean the salary for that talk role. about well, a I devalued it, profession like social media where people are like yeah. oh do you sit on facebook all day or like what do you do post instagrams and like they don't really think about what goes into it just because the you're strategy using of it AI all doesn't yeah. yeah i mean you're having a conversation with ai but the reason there's bookmarks and and all these resources around how to prompt it is because you still need to know what you're doing and yeah. that takes yeah. skill and requires compensation and respect the thing that is appealing to me is like giving myself more space for like strategy and like creative thinking because that's where i really want to focus my time and energy versus more like admin tasks that like i still have to do in my day to day but like how can yeah. i make ai work for me it's there to improve the decision making process sometimes you probably use ai to improve your decision making process but you don't even realize it because the options just put in front of you i know i use optimal send times all the time it's not yeah. like i'm going in and saying like when should i send this but it's just there in front of me like three o'clock's the best time it's got four yeah. stars it's got a quick visual aid like i'm like good to go sounds like four o'clock it is like i trust that it will just inform all of our processes a little bit quicker how marketers and leaders are thinking about this is top of mind because we recently teamed up with the Harris Poll to conduct a survey of business leaders and what we found in there is that overwhelmingly companies are investing in AI to improve decision making processes but also setting themselves up for long term success and I think particularly within the cu customer care function so I just want to spit some data beats at you real quick about what we found in this Bring poll it. so one thing is that executive and business leaders largely 
agree that AI will increase efficiency. I think that goes into a lot of what we've been talking about, um, both within our roles, but in the world writ large. So we see that in this data, 97% agree AI will enable companies to analyze social media data and insights more efficiently. Like what I loved about that data point is that not only will 97% like use AI to analyze social data and insights more efficiently, but that also implies that 97% are using social data and insights to like analyze and inform their decision making. So the fact that like AI will only enhance the use of social more is actually like really, really cool to me. I love that too, because we also found from our second quarter pulse survey that managers and marketing leaders are actually using AI already. So 71% of marketers have begun to integrate AI and ML tools into their workflow. Yes. Like that's wild, that's really right? High. Like, yeah, it's like I'm surprising, but I don't think it's that surprising considering like we already use social listening and like optimal. Yeah. 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 Like that. yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Like all of the creative things too. Cause like, I mean, we're fortunate enough to like have a creative team, but like still there are social teams that produce a lot of their own content. So like they're in, you know, Premiere, they're in Canva, they're like yeah. doing all these other things that like, I mean, all these other companies are rolling out their own AI solutions. Seeing that executives are investing in AI, but they're also investing in things like customer care or social insights are really encouraging to me that it's rooted in the benefits of the actual consumer. I'm not surprised that like this amount of people are actually like using it now and like kind of embracing it in this way. It's just like, how will they be using it? How many organizations want to talk about how innovative they are as a differentiator? Anyone can choose anything nowadays. There's competition for literally everything. Like AI can be that differentiator for you. And that is the same kind of thing that social was like 10 years ago in this era like this might be like a defining moment for brands where there might be like a separation of brands and companies that adopt kind of these ai ev evolutions and then the brands that don't and never really figure out like their footing in evolving technologies the differentiator won't be AI itself and like the technology and like if you're using it it's like how you're using it and like changing the customer experience we just covered a lot uh, as AI continues to integrate into our workplace in marketing and just our general lives but before we leave to face all of that we did ask chat GPT if brands and marketing teams should be worried about AI implementation and here is what it said. No, brands and marketing teams should not be worried about AI implementation, but they should be prepared to adapt to changes brought by AI. AI has the potential to revolutionize marketing and improve customer experiences, so brands that embrace AI will likely gain a competitive advantage. However, it's important for brands and marketing teams to approach AI implementation with caution and responsibility. They should ensure that AI is used ethically, transparently, and in, Compliance with regulations. They should also be aware of the potential biases and limitations of AI and work to mitigate these issues. Moreover, brands and marketing teams should not rely solely on AI and should continue to leverage the unique skills and perspectives of human professionals. AI should be seen as a tool that can augment and enhance human capabilities rather than replace them entirely. In conclusion, brands and marketing teams should embrace AI implementation as an opportunity to innovate and improve their operations but they should approach it with care and balance it with human expertise. I mean, ChatGPT gets it. I feel seen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that was... We're as smart as, as ChatGPT. Like, that was literally I know, like, everything we have said so far. I know. That's why I'm just like... I know. I'm Which like, is like, thank you for com thank you for comforting me. That was uncomfortable. Like, yeah. I... <laughs> it's just like, you did such a good job, AI, that... I'm uncomfortable. I mean, we just had this whole conversation about this and ChatGPT was like, yeah, let me give you like 10 sentences. <laughs> let me, yeah. <laughs> I love that though. Uh, You'd think yeah. pronunciation sort of AI. for AI would be a yeah. much better place considering yeah. with the progress yeah. of everything Maybe else. we're saying I would it imagine. wrong. Yeah. I mean, oh. it is AI. <laughs> yeah, so I find it validating. <laughs> Hellas finds it scary, but I find it validating. No, I, yeah. I, I see both sides. I see both sides of it. Like, okay, it's so comforting that it is a little like, 
why are you why are you doing such a good job of comforting me the thing that this highlights for me the most is how like truthfully ai can only congregate information that already exists on the internet yeah like it can't present new information that wasn't already programmed or existing somewhere online yes it's just sort of like it's parroting back like all the talking points that you know we consume as well as like consumers it can never break and break news it can never bring up a new point that's something that only people can do yeah. right but what it did do is like bring together the perspectives of all of us yeah. to see it all represented there of like that's been our entire yeah. conversation for the last like two weeks like that's pretty yeah. cool because to synthesize information is so challenging for me i think that's a great benefit to focus on too i, I love the synthesis of information it is so useful agree. love that exercise we are really keen on having new perspectives on this show and we want to know who do you want to hear from tell us what creators do you want to hear from are there subject matter experts you want to hear from that want to talk about the world of social with us let us know who, sh who we should have on as a guest uh, I'd love to hear your opinions. So that brings us to the end of our third episode. If you agree or disagree with our takes, we want to hear from you. So leave us a comment and tell us your thoughts. And then Q and the video rituals. Thank you to our director and producer and chat GPT operator Mall, our editor Ashley, and our tech director at Open Real Shannon. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, activate notifications, and follow us at Sprout Social. Thanks, everybody. Bye. See you next time. It's always great. If there's so much attitude in it. Is Mercury still in retrograde? <laughs>